Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our evening service here at Mount View Baptist Church. So glad to have each of you here tonight, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, just the Lord meeting with us this evening. I hope you've come prepared uh, to praise Him, worship Him. But let's stand together. We're going to start off with some singing. Brother Aaron's going to co come lead us in the song, Where Could I Go But To The Lord? Good singing, and uh, once again, so excited you're here this evening, and we're going to open in a word of prayer and ask the Lord's blessing and His help as we uh, worship Him this evening. And I'm going to ask at this time, Brother Porter, if you would please open us in a word of prayer. Mm. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, praise the Lord. Good to see each and every one of you back. Hope you had a great afternoon and certainly thankful for the good services we have uh, we had this morning and uh, just meeting together. And uh, don't have a, a whole lot of announcements other than just keep in mind this Wednesday we are planning on meeting. Some had questioned whether or not we're meeting on Wednesdays, but uh, we indeed are this Wednesday, 7 o'clock. However, there is no Bible Builders, so just keep that in mind, parents, no Bible Builders Club this Wednesday, uh, but we'll look forward to, uh, once again, the Lord meeting with us in this midweek service. And then uh, a couple of prayer requests. I'd like to just begin um, by asking if you would please keep in prayer. I know several have come to me having uh, prayer requests of members who have uh, coronavirus. Of course, Brother Ted Town mentioned his dad. Uh, who went into the hospital, and uh, so pray pray for uh, Ted's dad and ask the Lord just to help him. And then also Tom Clack's dad uh, also w went into the hospital uh, with COVID, so uh, please keep him in prayer. I, I haven't heard a recent update on how he's doing, but uh, continuing to pray for him. And then, uh, and then I just got mention of a surgery tomorrow. Jennifer uh, Byron, let's ask the Lord just to help her. She's going for surgery tomorrow, uh, knee surgery. So let's pray for Jennifer. This is uh, Mrs. Brewer's daughter, and uh, we want to ask the Lord just to uh, help her as she goes for surgery. And I'm certain there are others. We could go around tonight, and uh, those that we know who have COVID, and uh, I'm thinking of uh, all the, the Robles family, Coastline Baptist Church. The coronavirus has kind of swept through that church and, and those folks, so keep all of them in prayer. And others as well. I know Heritage Baptist Church had a lot of cases uh, so we're keeping one another in prayer, and uh, just 
uh, thanking the Lord for uh, the ability to meet. But let's do our part in keeping um, uh, distant from one another, keeping our mask on when we're talking with one another. And uh, we certainly want to be able to uh, be safe and stay open here. For uh, I look forward to church. This is uh, this is a haven uh, of rest and a place of refuge. And uh, in a place of good fellowship, so we want to continue to do that. We don't want to close down again uh, because of these cases. So let's uh, try to do our best and do our part uh, here at church. All right, well, that is all of the announcements uh, that I have. Of course, um, we are looking forward to what uh, lies ahead. Uh, We have some updates on our building. If you haven't seen the updates, you're welcome to take a look. Uh, We're closing in on finishing up this this first floor, we have cabinets, and uh, as we speak, there are countertops that are being made, and uh, we're going to have to pick out some appliances, and uh, someone came to me and said, I'd like to buy the dishwasher uh, for the kitchen, so what a blessing, amen? So uh, thank the Lord, God's providing and using his people to do it, and it's just wonderful to see how God just provides for his work here, and uh, so thank the Lord for that. Uh, but we do have a, a refrigerator, brand new refrigerator we'd like to buy, and, uh, and then a stove. We, we have to buy a stove, and uh, so that's the, the needs, uh, the immediate needs for the, the, the kitchen to get this building finished. And, of course, we have some baseboard and things we have to order and, and uh, lights, uh, uh, the sconce lights for the wall. And, uh, but all, when all that's done, that will nearly be complete. So uh, we're grateful for the progress there. And, uh, and, of course, some, some outside things we're looking forward to hoping to get the sidewalk done soon and we can open up these doors and be able to use that entrance, and uh, that will all be wonderful. All right. Well, that's all the, uh, the announcements I have. I wonder, are there any birthdays? I'm looking around. Uh, maybe you were not here this morning, but happy birthday to Madeline. Amen. All right. Well, Maddie's celebrating a birthday. We're going to sing out to Maddie. Uh, and she, her birthday is Christmas Day, right? Christmas Day. Uh, so happy birthday to Maddie. Anyone else celebrating a birthday we may have missed? Chandler is, well, let's see, is he going to be here, uh, is that next week? No. Sunday? That's this week. All right, well, Chandler, we'll sing out to you tonight. <laughs> happy birthday. He's a New Year's baby. So we have a Christmas baby and a New Year's baby in the house. So uh, not, not so much babies anymore, are they? <laughs> Uh, But happy birthday to you. And we're going to sing out Chandler. Maddie, would you stand? We're going to sing happy birthday. Here we go, church. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Give him a hand. All right. Uh, what about wedding anniversaries that we may have missed this morning? Anyone celebrating a wedding anniversary? All right, no anniversaries. Well, church, we're going to sing out a little more, so let's stand once again. Brother Aaron's going to come lead us in this next song. All your anxiety, all your care, bring to the Lord, leave it there. Come lead us in this song. Is there a
All right, just a quick reminder to pray for our missionaries of the week, the Reitenbach family in Greenfield, and also we're praying for the Proto family, our missionaries in Uruguay. We want to uh, keep these folks especially in prayer this week, uh, but continuing to pray for all of our missionaries. And then also uh, just opportunity to give to God's work here, and uh, there will be opportunity for in-person giving at the end of our service. Uh, but those uh, that are choosing to give online or through the mail, uh, certainly want to uh, be grateful and uh, thank God for the blessing of God's people being faithful to his work so we can continue uh, doing what God has called us to do uh, here at Mount View Baptist Church, and that is to, to be a light uh, and uh, to preach the gospel to our community. Uh, don't forget, listen, we uh, regularly update our track rack out there. We have uh, tracks for every season and uh, we have Sister Carol Sizek, who's uh, taking that on as a ministry. She's making sure we have uh, tracks are full and uh, ordered and updated all the time. And certainly appreciate her doing that. And uh, there's still some Christmas tracks in there. I think one talks about the greatest gift. And, uh, and these are opportunities that we have uh, in the season to share the gospel. So take some of those, uh, grab them, keep them in a place where maybe you have opportunity to share the good news, whether it's your workstation uh, you know, I was thinking uh, this week, praying for Brother Steve Malo. Uh, Brother Steve Malo, I remember his testimony. He kept tracks on his desk, Mountain View Baptist tracks on his desk. And one day, uh, a customer came in and asked about those tracks. And uh, she ended up coming here, attending here. And, uh, and that lady who came got saved. And uh, that lady is Sister Erin Duffy. Erin Duffy got saved. Uh, because of uh, Brother Malo's testimony at work and sharing the gospel. And uh, so we see how God can use tracks. And so uh, take a handful, pass them out this week, get somebody, uh, invite them. And, uh, you know, sometimes we can even narrow in on somebody. Just uh, pray for them, pray before you give it the track, and just pray for their soul. Uh, and I think it's important, church, that we do that. You know, somebody narrowed in on me. And maybe somebody narrowed in on you as well. Uh, and uh, they, it was like they chased you down, you know, they, they just needed to share the message with you, and, and I'm thankful for that, I, I really am, and want to be that for somebody else, so let's do our part, grab some tracks, and uh, in church, let's continue to do what God has called us to do uh, here at our church. At this time, we're going to have some singing, and uh, after the singing, we'll have uh, a message from God's Word, but let's hear some singing tonight. Be 
behold our God, seated on his throne, come let us adore him, behold our King, nothing can compare, come let us adore adore him behold our king nothing can compare come let us adore him thank you so much appreciate that tonight what a blessing and you all did a great job thank you so much careful and uh, that was uh, truly, truly a blessing. And uh, thank you for that song. What a great song. Amen. And uh, we serve a great God. And we appreciate our young people recognizing that and wanting to sing for him and uh, praise his name. All right. Well, once again, it is good to be with you this evening. And uh, if you would take your Bibles, we're going to join over in the book of Genesis this evening. Genesis. In chapter 13, Genesis chapter 13, and I'd like to begin reading here in verse 8, Genesis chapter 13, beginning in verse 8. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen. For we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. Verse 13 says, But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. We'll end our reading here uh, this evening. But I want to spend a little bit of time talking about this uh, portion of Scripture and uh, the decision that Lot made when he and his uncle Abraham uh, came to this point where they were, uh, they were st- having a strife or argument uh, because of their herd and their herdsmen, and uh, that contention brought them to a point of separation where they would go two separate ways, and, um, and, and to consider Lot's choice. And so this evening, for the next few moments, I want to preach you a message entitled, A Lot of Choices, A Lot of of choices, a little play on words there, but um, we'll consider Lot's choice and and uh, how monumental it truly was. Uh, this decision that he made, and uh, there's a point <clears throat> along the Continental Divide, and uh, it's high in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, and it's at that point which the waters of a small stream separate. It would not seem to matter much whether a drop of water goes to the left or to the right, but the outcome of those drops of water is totally different. One drop goes to the west, and eventually it flows into the Colorado River, and it empties into the Gulf of California and 
to the Pacific Ocean. Another drop goes to the east and until it flows into the Mississippi River and dumps into the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Two drops of water, two entirely different destinations, but one small turning point. It determines the outcome. And I'm certain that we can all Think of choices that we've made because choices are just like that. At time, they don't seem all that significant. But those choices set in motion will make a tremendous difference. They will shape our lives, often shape the lives of our children and grandchildren. And even after we die, those, uh, those choices live on. You know, if we could all just go around the room for a moment and share how we came to know Christ as our Savior, I would guess that many of you could point to some place or someone where uh, God put someone in your path and shared with you the gospel. He talked to you, and, and I'm certain you could uh, describe maybe a chain of events that brought you to that place where you ask Christ to be your Savior. And, of course, we understand God is working in all of that. <clears throat> but the choices that are before us are monumental. You remember the, uh, the rich young ruler, you know, who came to Christ and, and asked him about the kingdom of heaven, how one can come to the kingdom of heaven. And uh, you remember that Jesus said, keep all the commandments. And uh, that young rich ruler he said, I've done this from my youth up. And uh, Jesus said to him, well, then go sell all that you have and give it to the poor. And the Bible tells us that that young man turned away. He went away very sorrowful, for he had many riches. We think of that monumental decision when choices are before us. And, and indeed, that was an epic bad decision. And so it is with Lot. We see here Lot made an epic decision epic decision that resulted in some tragic uh, consequences. You know, when we consider Lot, and I, uh, the reason why we're uh, talking about Lot, actually I uh, noticed Lot in our, one of our recent studies through the book of uh, 2 Peter, and uh, Peter mentions Lot. But Lot is mentioned by name 29 times in the Genesis record. He's mentioned in the context of Abraham's family six times. Once, as we read here, in the context of strife. Three times in the context of choosing the best land according to its appearance and his separation from Abraham. Once he's mentioned in the context of separation from Abraham alone. Once he was mentioned when he was captured by evil kings. Once he's mentioned when he was rescued by Abraham. Once he's mentioned when he was doing business at the gate of Sodom. Twice he's mentioned when he was targeted as a victim by the men of Sodom. Once he's mentioned when he was protecting his angelic visitors, as you might remember, and five times when the angels were protecting him. Once he's mentioned when he seems as one mocking to his own family. Once he's mentioned when he was pleading for Zoar to be spared. Once he's mentioned in the context of a wicked sin of incest in his family. Peter mentioned Lot by name and called him, get this, a righteous man, a righteous man. Uh, Second Peter chapter 2, and that's where uh, this message really came from when I started thinking about Lot and his decision to go to Sodom. <clears throat> now, most of the time when Lot is mentioned in the Bible... He's mentioned in the context of self-induced problems. Now, listen, we get it. Problems come from all different directions. Some are just by living in the world. Uh, you know, as we even sang the song, you know, where could I go but to the Lord? We recognize that, that problems will come, and uh, we're thankful that we can go to the Lord. Uh, but problems are, are uh, among us uh, merely by being in on living on this earth, but we also understand that problems 
uh, come from others. You know, I thought of Lot's family and, you know, his daughters, his wife and his daughters, you know, and they, they suffered really under that decision uh, made by Lot to, to go to Sodom. And we're going to see a, a little bit more about that in detail. But uh, problems often come into our lives because of the decisions of others. Uh, you, know, you think of children, you know, that are, that are kind of just swept up in the, often the bad decisions of parents. And, uh, and it's tragic, isn't it? Uh, sometimes to see children have to suffer because of the bad decisions of, of their parents. Uh, but we also know this, that problems are often self-induced. There are self-made uh, storms. And in no doubt, this was a self-made storm. And that's where he is mentioned most often in, um, in Lot's life. <clears throat> many of Lot's troubles, and, many, and think about this in light of our troubles, many of Lot's troubles could have been avoided. Uh, and I think often we, uh, we feel the same about our own problems. They, they could have been avoided. If I could have just made a better decision at this particular point, and what's interesting is that that particular point where we make a decision, again, it doesn't seem that mon monumental at that particular time, but eventually it, uh, in its harvest and in, in its consequence, it can have monumental impact in our lives. Uh, you see, uh, God sets in motion a principle upon this earth, and we find that in Galatians chapter 5. Just hold your place here, if you would, please. Let's go over to Galatians in chapter, I'm, I'm sorry, Galatians, uh, yeah, in chapter 5. And we, we see here that uh, there is a law that is put in place that God put uh, in motion on this earth, and that is the law of sowing and reaping. In Galatians, in chapter 5, notice what he says here. And, uh, and if you would, let's, let's skip down to verse, uh, verse 13. He says, for, for brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. You see, so there's, there's a liberty, there's a freedom. And, of course, this is speaking about the freedom we have in Christ. And as Christians, we, we have this liberty, we have this you know, this, this opportunity uh, to live within that freedom or as the, the Christians that are found in Galatians, they chose to go back into bondage. And really, that's what Galatians is all about. But turn over to chapter 6 for a moment. And let's look together in verse 7. It says, actually, begin in verse uh, 4. It says, but let, it, let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teach, teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his, to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And that's where he goes on to say, and, so, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we see here there's a principle that God has laid out in his word, and, uh, and that goes for every one of us. There's the principle of sowing and reaping. We have choices uh, that we make every day that, will, that we, they're like sowing seed. And uh, in some of those seeds, if we sow, as it says here, to the Spirit, we shall have uh, a good reaping, life everlasting, things that will, will uh, result in eternity. And they're, you know, they're, they'll matter in eternity. And, and by the way, every decision that we make for Christ, every good decision that we uh, make in following Him and, or getting closer to God, uh, those decisions... Listen, that, that will matter in eternity. You staying close to God matters. Me staying close to God, that matters. And, uh, you know, us being faithful, that's why it says, be not weary and well-doing, for in due season you shall reap. 
And so uh, we, we make these choices every day. This is a principle that is going on right now in your life and mine. What we sow, uh, it's going to matter. It's going to result in something. And, um, and we certainly want to make those good decisions. So the law of, of reaping and sowing is something that you and I cannot get away from. Uh, it's part of our daily life. And it was part of Lot's daily life. Um, he made some bad decisions. Now, let's go back here for a moment in Genesis. Skip back over there. And let's uh, look at some of the decisions he made and the results of that. What brought him to the place where he made a decision to go to Sodom? Well, we understand from our passage here, as uh, they were having this conflict, this strife, that Lot made his decision based on appearance. It appeared like a good decision. You know, what, what he saw and what he believed was real uh, was based upon what he, what he thought and what his eyes were telling him. Look at verse 10. It says, And Lot lifted up his eyes, Beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. You see, don't always believe what you see. Uh, sometimes we we think, you know, that what, what we uh, what we what we think, you know, is is the best decision based upon what we see. Uh, the Bible tells us that we walk not by sight, right? We walk by faith, not by sight. And Lot made a decision based on sight. Uh, Take your Bibles, and you're there in Genesis chapter 13. Hold your place, but go over to chapter 27 for a moment. There's another bad decision we see, not only in Lot choosing Sodom based on sight, but I was also thinking of Isaac. And if you remember, Isaac had a similar situation where he made a decision based on his feelings. And it's never good to base decisions on our senses, on how we feel about things. Genesis chapter 27, and this is where we find uh, Esau losing his blessing. Uh, And it was all because Isaac, his father, was tricked. Uh, Look, if you would, please, in verse 1, it says, It came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know that the day of my death, I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out in the field and take me some venison, and make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison to bring it. Rebekah spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Uh, and, of course, it goes on here to say that, you know, they, they got this plan. But notice what it says. Esau couldn't see. And he's, you know, he is making this decision. Uh, he says to Esau, Go into the field. Get me some venison. But he was blind. And uh, so relying on sight was not something he could uh, truly do uh, effectively. And uh, this, of course, would result in him uh, being tricked a little bit later. Notice, if you would, please, uh, go, so let's skip down in the, same, <clears throat> in, in the same chapter. Now it says in verse 10, it says, And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, peradventure, will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring, and, uh, I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go and fetch me them. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat such as his father loved, And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. 
I, I, I've often thought about this passage and must have thought if, if, if Jacob could pass for Esau wearing goat skin, Esau must have been one hairy dude. <laughs> I always laugh at that portion. Like, he actually got away with it wearing goat skin. So, yeah, Esau was one hairy fella. Uh, but anyway, he, he goes in, and, and notice what happens when he goes in. Uh, verse uh, 18, and he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I. Notice this, who art thou, my son? So the voice immediately must have, have uh, caused some suspicion because he asked, who art thou, my son? And verse 10 says, Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, how is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my son, very son Esau, or not. So, so he had some suspicion. We can see that from the story. Jacob went near unto Isaac, Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy as his brother's Esau hands, so he blessed him. Now, this is a lesson for us, isn't it, church? He based his decision on feeling. And that, that's really the lesson here. He made a tragic mistake, and, of course, Jacob was able to rob the blessing. And it's amazing how God, even through all of this, his plan was being fulfilled. But the fact is, is that Isaac made this decision based on feeling, and we do the same. We do the same often because it's how we feel and that is never a good, uh, a, a good indicator of our decisions based upon how we feel or what we see, the senses. You know, James talks about that. James talks about how decisions should be made. And, and he puts it this way, if the Lord will, we will do this or that. You know, our decisions shouldn't be based upon how we feel. It should be based upon if it's the Lord's will. And so Lot, getting back to Lot now, Lot chose to pitch his tent towards Sodom. Why? Because he looked upon the plains of Sodom, and they were well watered. Let's go back here in Genesis chapter 13. I want to point out some other things uh, here. <clears throat> in verse 11, it says, Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. You know, uh, we know the story. I don't have time to get into all of it, but of course we know that was a bad decision for Lot to bring his family into that wicked city. But the Bible says here Lot chose to separate himself from Abraham. You know, it's never a good decision, number one, to base our decisions on feeling, but it's never also, it's never a good decision to part from good company to part from good company. You know, he left his father or, or his uncle Abraham. You know, I, I, listen, I know there was strife there, but I believe in some other way this could have been worked out. They could have maybe uh, just separated in the sense that they were traveling in the same direction. They could have still kept going in the same direction, maybe just following separately. But Lot could have said, you know, uh, listen, I, I realize God has a plan for you, that God has called you. That's the reason why I'm here in the first place, because God called you. And he could have continued following, I believe, in some way. He could have decided that. Do you realize that Abraham was called the friend of God? He was a man who was called of God and, and was following God. And, and I know Abraham got off track a few times, but he quickly got back on track. He continued following God. He was the friend of God. And listen, anyone who is the friend of God, it's a good decision to stick by them. Don't part company from people who are following God. And a lot of bad decisions are just made because of the company that we're keeping, the people that are around us. We choose to follow the wrong people and the wrong company. 
Oh, I've seen it often, so many times. Just one decision, one friend. We think this person is the coolest person in the world, and we want to be like them. We want to, we want to act like them. We want to talk like them. We want to look like them. And boy, we make the decision to part from the people that God has put around us. Good, godly company. And we go off and follow the wrong people. And... Uh, and those decisions, though it may seem small, can end up with monumental consequences in our life. The wrong people. You know, I've shared with you this story, but I've seen it in my own life and in my own family. <clears throat> my uh, brother Keith, he's uh, the second oldest in our family. Uh, he's with the Lord today. But my brother Keith... Uh, was saved. Actually, he was saved before I was saved. Uh, my brother Kenny got saved and came home and preached the gospel to our family. Keith uh, quickly uh, came along. Uh, he realized at that point in his life he needed the Lord, and, and uh, it was almost immediately he trusted Christ. Some of you met my brother Keith. I know Mrs. Brew is back here. She was here when my brother Keith lived with us, and he was a member here at Mountain View Baptist Church, and served with us here, helped in the teen group. And uh, he was here living with us for a while. He was separated from his wife, trying to work things out. And uh, he ended up going back home and getting uh, reunited with his wife. And they were even back in church for a little while. But, you know, the, the friends, uh, the old crowd, he just never got away from them. And they, they would constantly invite him out different places and hang out and and uh, he never he never burned those bridges he, he he always kept those those people in his life and uh you know the trouble is oftentimes when we think well i can be i can be a light to them you know i can help them i can bring them up you know oftentimes more than not we ourselves get brought down. And that's what happened with my brother Keith. He got dragged back into the old life, doing the old things, and, uh, and it eventually ended up taking his life. You see, we think we're strong enough uh, in those decisions to, you know, to, to, to re remain faithful and remain steadfast, and uh, it, we're deceived. And that's why the Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And, and, uh, and that's what happened with my brother Keith. He, he ended up reaping some of the, uh, uh, of the bad decisions that he made. And I just use that as an example of someone that I know because of the company. The company that he kept was a big part of uh, what happened in his life. And so choose wisely when it comes to the company you keep. You know, one friend, uh, you know, one, one decision, it, it's all it takes at times, just one person that comes into your life that, that knocks you off the path and gets you away from the godly company that God has given you. You know, I, I look out here this evening and... Um, I, I praise God for our church. We, we have uh, a lot of young families. Uh, most of them are coming out of my family. <laughs> uh, they're here tonight. Uh, and, uh, but we have others. I think of the Tarquinos and, and, uh, and uh, who else is recently married here? Who else? Kendra, Tom, and uh, a lot of these young families. And, uh, and I'm thankful we have a lot of them. Because uh, they're, they're, they're keeping good company with one another. And, uh, and this goes for every group in our church, whether you're old, young, you know, teenagers. Uh, these three that were up here tonight, boy, they're, they're tightly knit, these three. And uh, they're here just every service and uh, together, do, serving God together. And, and uh, that's good company. It's good company. And if God has put people in your life that, are a friend of God, that's someone you want in your life, someone who's going to encourage you. The problem with Lot is he left the good company in his life. It was a decision he made. So Abraham separated himself, uh, I'm sorry, Lot separated himself.
from Abraham. Uh, let's go on here and uh, let's look together in verse uh, 13 again. It says, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. You know, given the opportunity to choose where he could go, he made his decision to go to a place that was very wicked. He was misled. And again, decisions are, of life are best made when they're made based on the knowledge of God's will. <clears throat> um, he should have prayed. He should have sought the Lord. I, I, I mentioned uh, James here in just a moment, but I just want to turn here quickly in James in uh, chapter uh, in, in James chapter 4. James chapter 4 in verse 13, it says, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. And I imagine this is what Lot thought. We're, we're going to go in Sodom and we're going to prosper there. We're, we're going to go there and make a life and it's going to be wonderful. And I'm certain as he's making his way to Sodom, you know, there were a lot of good ideas, and there were a lot of plans that he had. And he said, this is going to be a place where our family will thrive. You know, he wouldn't have initially taken his family in, into that place knowing that place was going to be under the judgment of God, knowing that it would be destroyed, knowing that his wife would uh, be, become so uh, connected with that place that uh, she couldn't get away. She uh, turned into that pillar of salt as she looked back and her heart longed for Sodom. He would have never gone there in the first place knowing all of that would have happened. But you see, James says, go to now. Ye that, ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. That's a place where we're going to prosper. That's what he must have said. Look at verse 14. If you're there in James chapter 4, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little while or a little time, and then vanisheth away. For ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live, and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boasting, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Now, there's no doubt in my mind Lot knew. The pe he knew about Sodom's reputation. The Bible tells us it was a place where wickedness dwelled. You know, if you could only imagine a place, maybe uh, a more modern-day place, you know, wherever you think about, uh, it could be Las Vegas or it could be, you know, uh, Atlantic City, you know, these places that often have this, this kind of a lifestyle, you know, the, uh, the, the gambling, the, you know, the red light districts and, all these, these places where wickedness often dwells. You know, if you're going there as a missionary, that's one thing. But if you're going there to find a good life and a godly life, it, it, it may be very difficult. And again, if you're just going uh, maybe for uh, the idea of, well, that'll be a place where we can make a lot of money, we can be rich and we can prosper you know, those kinds of decisions even Christians oftentimes make. They'll, they'll move to a place based on how, uh, how much money they can make or, or you know, a, 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 job, a, a, a job opportunity. Now, listen, thank, thankful for, for a job opportunity, and if it does bring you to another place, we've had that happen many times here. But, you know, I, we always encourage people, listen, don't let that be the only decision. Or if it, that is the decision, make sure you're connected with a good church. Make sure you have some people around you that will encourage you in a godly way. Uh, because Lot uh, found when he got there that that environment and uh, the reputation of that city indeed was wicked and it resulted in his family uh, being consumed by it and being impacted by that. So as a Christian, just think about this for a moment and Lot's choices that he made, a lot of choices. We make a lot of choices. Every day we make decisions. Are we as Lot basing decisions on what we see, our, our feelings, our emotions, or are we basing them upon what God's will? By the way, God will never lead you to a place 
that is contrary to his will. He will never do that. He will never bring you in, into a situation that is contrary. In fact, we also find that James talks about wisdom and how the wisdom of God, uh, if you were to back up to chapter 3 and verse 17, it says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable and gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That last part, it says, without hypocrisy, means that the wisdom that is from God is not contrary to his will. You see, God's not going to give you wisdom that will lead you into a place that would compromise your testimony or compromise uh, your decisions um, that would cause you to be disobedient to God. Um, By the way, that wisdom is available to all of us, the wisdom that is from above. We need wisdom for good choices. And I love the part that says it's without partiality. In other words, it's for everybody. God's wisdom is for everybody. We, we can have that wisdom. It's given to us. Uh, actually, the Bible tells us in Proverbs that he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. And that's something that Lot could have used as some good wisdom to be able to look ahead and, and see that that place of Sodom, it's, it's full of wickedness, and that's not a place that I should bring my family. That's not a place that I should, uh, that, that I should pitch my tent toward. And there are a lot of Christians that, just as Lot, they pitched their tents towards wickedness and towards the world. Decisions about where to live or work are based upon how much money that can be made. Decisions about entertainment are based upon what everyone else is doing and what every else, uh, everybody else is enjoying. Decisions about uh, how we live are based upon what is socially acceptable, never mind what God's will says. You know, even decisions for... Raising children are often allowed, you know, to make their own decisions. I've even heard parents say, well, when it comes to their religious decisions, I'm letting them choose themselves. We, we, we've heard parents say that. Well, you know, they make their own decisions. I don't talk to them about religion. You know, that's not wise. Uh, you know, someone said this, uh, if, uh, you know, if you don't teach uh, children, uh, about the world, well, the world is certainly going to teach our children. You know, if we don't teach them what's right in the world, mark it down, the world is going to tell them what is acceptable and what, is, what, what they value as right and wrong. You see, there were consequences of Lot's decision to go to Sodom. The law of gravity teaches men that what goes up must come down. Man's not smart enough to outsmart the law of gravity, nor is he smart enough to outsmart the law of reaping and sowing. That's a law that we all are under. And so I want to encourage you, based upon Lot's life and a lot of choices that we make, let's ask God for wisdom. We're on the verge of a new year. There'll be a lot of decisions made in 2021, there have been a lot of decisions made this year, some good, some bad. Those decisions that have brought you closer to God, I guarantee you were based upon his will, based upon the company that you're keeping, and those are all good things, and uh, I want to encourage you to cultivate that even further. Let that be something that propels you to make good decisions in 2021. I just want you to know you have a room full of people. Look around for a moment. You have a room full of people that will encourage you in good decisions, in godly decisions. That's what we're here for. That's that's why God has given you a pastor to help you, uh, in best I know, uh, based upon what I know about the Bible, to help you in making good decisions. That's why God has given us a youth pastor here and uh, and to guide our, our young people in making good decisions. I know this man every Sunday, every Wednesday, is standing up before our young people, encouraging them to make good choices because we've seen too many make bad choices, and we want to help you avoid those. Again, you can't get away from that law. What you reap, you sow. And so let's learn from Lot this evening. Let's bow together for prayer. Father, we thank you for the examples we have in your word. 
Some are good, some are bad. Lord, we're thankful that we have this story before us. And Lord, uh, we know that Lot made some bad decisions in his life. But Lord, even in all of that, uh, we understand that he was a righteous man. He was, he was one who believed. Lord, even as believers, we can make some bad decisions and some bad choices. God, I pray that we'll learn from the mistakes of others and we'll avoid some pitfalls and traps and avoid being deceived because sin is so deceitful. It's so, uh, it, it, it's the, the temptations that come are often strong and we find ourselves being deceived and think we can somehow avoid the law of reaping and sowing. God, I pray that we'll get wisdom that's from above. That we'll be guided into your will and we'll, we'll remain there. That we'll be committed to, to well-doing and not grow weary. Lord, I pray that uh, you would just bless each one here. And, and uh, I know that there are some even here this evening that maybe are feeling the, they're, they're in the harvest of some bad decisions. And Lord, we're so, also grateful that you are a God of second chances. Lord, even when we do fall and we mess up, uh, we know that your word tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his right hand. And Lord, we're so grateful that even when we fall, you're there to pick us up and help us start anew. And maybe that's what somebody needs tonight, just a fresh start. Maybe this year has been a year of bad decisions, but maybe tonight just committing to, to making some wise choices. We'll thank you for all that you'll do. Lord, I do pray if there's someone here or maybe watching live stream that has never come to the place in their life where they accept Christ as their Savior. And Lord, they're looking in their life, they're seeing a series of events that maybe even have led them to this place. And Lord, we're so thankful that you are searching, you are, uh, you are uh, working situations in our lives to get us to the place where we see our need for Christ. And maybe someone's there tonight. I pray they'll open their heart, trust Christ as your Savior, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. We'll thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand together, church, for just a moment. And as we conclude our service... We'll conclude in a time of invitation and prayer. Maybe tonight God has spoken to your heart about some decisions that you've made and maybe a decision tonight to get closer to God, to make some good decisions, just to remain faithful and well-doing. That's something you want to decide to do tonight. I invite you to come. Maybe tonight is you need to make a decision for the Lord to just get back on track. Maybe you have been keeping the bad, some bad company and you realize that you're drifting away. And maybe get connected with the company that God has put in your life. Those that are keeping you close to Him. Why don't you come spend some time with the Lord tonight and pray. Again, if you're not saved, I want to encourage you. Come to Christ. He stands ready to save. Bible says today is the day of salvation. God is speaking to you today, drawing your heart to him. Why don't you come make that decision tonight and be saved. Let's remain in prayer for just a moment. sing out that first verse of that song I have decided I have decided 
to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Amen. Thank you for joining with us tonight. And uh, our folks on live stream just uh, want to say we miss you here. Thank you for tuning in tonight. And uh, we invite you back this Wednesday, 7 p.m., for our midweek service, and we'll look forward to that time. Uh, but let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Don't forget, as we dismiss, we do have our in-person in giving tonight. Brother uh, Ted's back there ready, and uh, we'll have opportunity to give to God's work here at uh, Mount Me Baptist Church. Uh, Brother Zulia, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer? Amen. The Lord loves you, I love you, and you're dismissed.